Uh-huh. I was scheduled eight days in a row during finals, and here's how that conversation went. Uh, manager, why am I scheduled eight days in a row during finals? Oh, well, everyone else asked for special time off during finals, and you didn't, so I figured it was fine. Well, if any of my finals had fallen outside of my normal time slots for class, then I would have asked for a special accommodation on my schedule, but they didn't. They're all happening during normal class hours, so I didn't need to ask for the time off, but I, I still have finals. I, I'm still in college. I still need to study. Oh, yeah, so can we please fix my schedule so that I'm not working eight days in a row during finals? Well, the schedule's already been posted, so I can't change it. Okay, bet. So after that, I walked into my front desk director's office, slapped on my resignation, and said, I'm done. And he was like, what's going on? And so I told him the conversation I just had with the manager, and he was like, <sighs> He promised to change the schedule and begged me to stay, and I did for a little while longer until that manager ticked me off again, and I finally left. <laughs> Okay, what made me finally leave the first toxic work environment I ever really worked in with the first truly toxic manager I'd ever had in my entire life? Well, it was my friend. In college, I had this roommate who was my best friend who worked at the sister hotel of the company that I worked at. And when I told her all these things that this manager was doing, not just to me, but to the other employees, she was like, dude, you should get out of there and come to my hotel. My manager is so much better here. Let me send him a message right now and let him know that he needs to pull your application for the transfer. So I applied for this transfer and I got it, but I still had to work the last two weeks at this location before I could go to the new one. And that's when this manager showed their true colors. I made a mistake at work that I should have just gotten a verbal warning for, but instead this manager tried to write me up and said, oh, by the way, this may affect your transfer. I said, oh, absolutely not, went all the way to the top and got that last week off before I could transfer so I didn't have to deal with them. Oh, and that write-up, it got scrapped and that manager got in some big trouble. So when you've been working in hotels for a while, there comes a point in your career where you start to feel like I've seen it all, I've done it all, nothing can surprise me. And then you work in hotels for a little while longer and you realize there's always gonna be something new and surprising and you're just gonna have to deal with it. So to set the stage for a recent surprise that happened to me when I was working overnight at my hotel, uh, we had this couple who was staying with us for a while. They were a very nice couple, elderly, and the husband had just had surgery at a hospital nearby. And like I said, they'd been with us for a while, so we all knew them, we all liked them, and we all loved their little five-month-old Yorkie that they brought with them. But I come in for my shift one evening, and all of a sudden, ambulances pull up outside of our hotel, and we're all like, what's going on? We didn't call those, what's happening? Turns out the husband had had some complications after his surgery and he needed to go to the hospital. So the paramedics rush upstairs, whisk him out, and he and his wife have to leave the little puppy in the room in the crate. And of course, because the puppy's probably very scared and confused, she starts yapping and whining constantly. And I get a call from neighboring guests saying, hey, there's a dog yapping, can you make it stop? And we can't exactly tell these guests, oh, sorry, it's owners have got to the hospital. No, we can. <laughs> deal with it. So my trainee and I call the general manager and we ask him what to do. And he says that if we're comfortable with it, we could just go to the room, get the puppy, bring her downstairs and watch her until the parents come home. Now keep in mind, this is a very unusual situation. Under no circumstances would hotel staff usually go into your room and take your animal out of it. That's highly irregular. However, because we knew these guests, because they stayed with us for a long time, and because we knew the dog was friendly, we went ahead and left a voicemail with the owners letting them know that we were gonna watch after their dog uh, while they were dealing with the hospital stuff. And honestly, she was a perfect little angel. I mean, look at that face. How could she not be wonderful? And she helped me at the front desk, checking people in and just pretty much the whole night she stayed right by my side. My shift did end before her owners came back so my AM person ended up just inheriting a puppy and she was pretty excited about it. I mean we all were excited to look after her. I mean she was just a little angel and so cute. But by the time I returned from my shift that evening the owners had come back and they actually came to the front desk and thanked me and my trainee for looking after their puppy all night. They were so happy to find out that she hadn't been left alone all night in her crate scared so that was awesome. I am gonna miss that little dog though. I think every workplace should have a workplace pet because oh it just made the shift 10 times better. So the other day at work, I had a guest almost give me a heart attack. <laughs> I see that we have a guest waiting in line, so I walk up to her and I'm my normal bubbly self and I ask her, hi, how you doing today? And she's very deadpan and she just says, I'm here to check in. And I say, well, that's what I'm here to do. Follow me over this way. And I get her all checked in. I'm explaining the resort and all its offerings. And the whole time she's just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
And I noticed she's kind of low energy, so I asked her, did you have a long travel day? And she says, yeah, I'm here with my family, and we drove all the way here this morning, we spent all day at the theme park, and now I'm really tired. And I say, okay, well, we're almost done, so we'll finish you up so you could get some rest. And we finish up, and I ask if she has any questions for me, and she says, yeah. I want to talk to your supervisor, can you get them for me? And I'm just like, eh. Cause that's not normally a good thing. So I'm like, what did I do now? But of course I say right away and I go get my supervisor and I'm like, I don't know what I did, but lady wants to talk to you. Mm. And we go out together and this lady looks to my supervisor, points to me and says, she is amazing. She is awesome at what she does. Make sure you keep her around. And my supervisor and I were just like, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You really just never know what a guest is going to say. A guest in my hotel accused people of stealing their food. This story is from r slash tales from the front desk, and this is how it goes. One night, a guest came down to the front desk and said, hey, our keys don't work for our room, can we get new keys? So I make them the keys, send them on their way, and then they come back down minutes later screaming about the fact that they had left food outside their door and now it was gone and someone had stolen it. The guest literally calls the police and reports stolen food and accuses the people across the hall of stealing the food without any evidence. And while this is happening, I'm calling housekeeping asking if they might have thrown away the food by accident thinking it was trash. And the housekeeper says, no, we haven't thrown away any food, but we did see some food left outside of a door on the second floor. These guests were staying on the fourth floor. So yes, they had gone to the wrong room on the wrong floor, left their food outside of it when the key didn't work, and then went to the actual right room and thought that the food had been stolen. And yes, they had to call the police back and explain to them that they were wrong. <laughs> So when you work in hotels, there is no shortage of crazy stuff that you see in and out of these rooms. And my favorite thing is when those things are posted online. Good morning. That is blood on the sheets. I dropped a pork chop on the bed. The incident itself really sums up who I am as a person. Regards, Dylan. Uh, 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 uh who designed this floor plan? I'm logging this one into Lost and Found. Um, Mm. Now, I have worked at hotels that have put out flavored water for guests, and I have seen some questionable choices in flavoring, but, um, nothing quite as vile as banana water. What? And then there's this poor unfortunate soul who found that the person who stole his AirPods was staying in a hotel two blocks away from him. And of course, I can never forget the poor hamster that was left in a trash can. What half these pictures have taught me, though, is that if you're trying to check into a hotel early and the room isn't ready yet, um... Probably because people are leaving some crazy stuff behind. Okay, but for real though, it absolutely feels like you've cracked a code when you realize that if you are actually really nice to people about an issue, that you will get so much more than if you were rude about it. It seems like it should be obvious that you can get what you want by being nice, but unfortunately the hospitality industry itself has dug its own grave by constantly rewarding bad behavior. That's how Karens rose to prominence is because they were always brash and mean, but they got what they wanted from it. We are seeing a trend away from that, but people still do get what they want when they complain. However, I have my own malicious compliance way of approaching that. If someone is extremely mean to me right from the get-go, I will do the bare minimum to help to get them out of my face. But if someone comes up to me and they are kind and understanding and patient, oh, I will bend over backwards to help you. What's more, I will tell people that I am doing X, Y, and Z on top of fixing their problem because they were so nice because I'm trying to spread the message that being nice works. I hate ghosts. So the thing is, I don't believe in ghosts, but I also kind of do, and I also grew up in one of the most haunted cities in America, so like, ah! So for the most part, I just try to not think about it, but there was one time when I was trained to be overnight at my current hotel, and my trainer looked at me and said, oh, by the way, there's a ghost living in the back offices. And I was just like, don't tell me that. And he was like, yeah, no, there's a ghost that lives in the admin offices. He turns on the lights, he turns on the fans, the computers, and you just, you know, you have to put up with it. And I was just kind of like, ha ha ha, you're so funny. <laughs> But sure enough, one night after I turned off all the lights, I went to the back offices and all the lights were on and I rushed back outside freaking out. Going, oh my God, the lights are on, the lights are on, the lights are on, no, 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 I hate this. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. I have to go turn the lights off and I asked security to come with me to turn the lights off because you know, security's gonna do a lot against a ghost. And when I went to the back offices, I saw my trainer sneaking in through the side door about to go turn on the fans too. And I was like, I caught you, I knew it. And he was just like, oh, mm. I was so mad at him. 